Welcome everyone. This is a webinar on 321 Backup. We're talking about how to keep your photos, videos, and docs safe. And we're focusing on easy automated strategies, things that are gonna work by making sure that you keep everything in a set it and forget it type state. Because backup tools that you have to remember to run tend to fail because we forget to remember to run them. Today, we've got a great collection of panelists, and I'll introduce them to you when we get into them, but we're coming together to celebrate World Backup Day. And World Backup Day is March 31st, and they ask a simple question. What would you do if you lost everything? And this is a reality. It does happen. As we know, there's everything from losing a device to bad things like ransomware to device failure, to knocking over a Diet Coke on your laptop and having it go poof. There are so many things that can cause problems, so it's important that we have backups in place. So World Backup Day is March 31st every year, and they invite you to ask that question. What would you do if you lost everything? Chances are, if you think about it, the answer would be, well, I do something about it. I don't want that to happen. So with World Backup Day, this is a great opportunity to think about how can you easily change your computer practices so that you keep this content safe? So pretty straightforward. And just think about this. If anything were to happen to your phone, your computer or tablet, some of your most important documents, your photos, videos, and memories, those could be lost forever. And you don't want that. Whether it's pictures of a vacation, your wedding, photos of your kids or grandkids, these are important things that you don't want to lose. And so it's essential that we take steps to keep things safe. Because of this, it's time to back up your files and make sure that you never really lose anything that's truly important to you. And that's the whole concept of backup, taking the time to keep it safe. What you're gonna learn in today's event is really useful, practical information. We're gonna give you the high level overview of how to use this information, and we're gonna give you the opportunity to request an ebook. So in our closing survey, you get the opportunity to tell us if you'd like the ebook. And for those of you watching the recording, we'll also have the ebook and slides posted so you can access that and be able to get the specific instructions on how to put these techniques into place. So today is the what and the why, and then we'll follow up with extra details about the how so you can tailor your own custom solution. So what are you gonna learn? Well, if you've ever felt like you lost an image or you felt at risk, you're gonna learn how to do something about that. And you're not gonna to have to feel like you really don't know what's backed up and what's not backed up. We're gonna talk about strategies for both on-site and off-site backup, not just 100% reliance on the cloud. And we're gonna make sure that this process is super clear and easy to implement. So the core of today, it's all about 321 backup. This is a simple concept and it's an effective strategy that lets you protect photos, videos, and personal data. You're gonna learn from myself, as well as two other photographers and storage experts on how to keep your personal information safe. And this can prevent things such as loss from theft, hardware failure, natural disaster. There are so many things that can cause you to lose data and we're gonna learn how to protect ourselves from all of those. Now, the specific topics that you're gonna learn is what is a backup? How to choose a backup hard drive? What should you look for? how to safely back up things like your laptop and your phone, which are portable devices that are highly risky for loss or theft. And you're gonna learn how to set up your computer so it clones itself every night as a backup for emergency recovery. We'll talk about some cloud storage options, which you can use to supplement your backup strategy, not be the only part of your backup strategy. And you're gonna learn how to keep everything in perfect sync. Now, throughout this event, we're gonna talk about multiple types of technology. So you're gonna hear of different brands and solutions, and you'll need to decide which one is the best one for you. But everything we mention are things that we have validated and tested. Either I've used them personally hands-on, or I solicited the opinion of multiple experts to validate that these were good solutions. This event that you're watching is being produced in part with help from both Mylio Photos and Crucial, so what happens here is these two companies are also guests. So you're gonna hear a little bit about their solutions and they're very good solutions. So I think you'll be excited by what you learn, but we are presenting holistic information that will work no matter what products you use. And these techniques are designed to be used by anyone of any skill level because backup should be easy. My name's Rich Harrington. I'm your host today, and I'm a visual storyteller. 
So I both work in the photo and video industry, creating content. We do a lot of work for nonprofits and also high tech companies. And I've got a big interest in artificial intelligence. I've been working on a lot of AI photo tools for many years. Plus, when I get the chance, I love to travel. I'm a husband and a father. Through the years, if I figured something out, I wrote it down. I've published 40 books about photography and video, as well as released more than 200 full-length classes. So what I like to say is not that I know a lot, but that I've learned a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes. Trust me, everything I'm sharing with you today has come from learning things the hard way. And I'd like to save you that pain of losing important, valuable content that you really want to keep safe. So that's just a little bit about my background. Through the years, I've gotten a chance to work with several big television networks, helping them manage their extensive video libraries. So we're talking years of content, and I've worked with a lot of software companies to make their products better. Well, let's jump in and right out of the way, make sure we all understand what is a backup, because this word can mean different things depending upon who you talk to. So it's important that we understand the core concept. So a backup means you have a copy of all your important files. For most of you, this is gonna mean things like your photos and videos and documents and email. It's really important you keep that because knowing that your email database is backed up, for example, might mean that you have access to important business decisions. And if you store everything in one place, like just on your smartphone or your laptop, and that device gets smashed, dropped, stolen, has a cup of soda poured on it as the person is reaching across to hand it next to you when you're sitting on an airplane. Well, that could be the end of that data. So if you're not routinely backing up, you can lose important stuff. And we don't want that. So you should back up because losing things sucks. That's the bottom line. You don't want to lose your stuff. And it's really commonplace. So if you really think this has never happened to you, it's more likely that you just never noticed. And if you go to recover data using recovery software or recovery services, it's really expensive, like more than the cost of your laptop expensive. So you can buy an affordable, fast SSD for a few hundred dollars. You're going to hear solutions like this later when we talk about it with our friends from Crucial. Plug that into your laptop and just have it automatically back it up. I just set a calendar alert to remind me once a week to do this. That way, the most I'm going to lose is one week's worth of stuff. And in fact, I tend to plug it in almost every night. I just plug it in and it automatically backs up my entire laptop. Why not spend $300 on an insurance policy than having to send your device off for three or four weeks and spend five or $6,000 hoping that you can get your stuff back? So one small accident or failure can really mess up the stuff you care about. So here's a couple of things to just kind of paint a picture so you understand the problem. Only about 20% of people say they've never made a backup. The number of people doing weekly or daily backups is really low, or they think they're backing up because they've got some cloud service that's turned on, but they're not sure. People are least likely to back up the older they get because it is technically complex. 30% of all computers already have a virus or malware that can be used to take your data hostage. And about 14% of all data loss is just caused by human error. So even if you do everything right, you could be the problem. And 113 phones are stolen every single minute of the day. So that's kind of depressing. And it means that you have to be aware that there's lots of things that can get in the way. Lost data, software corruption, things go bad. Bad operating system, bad updates, leaves your machine in a corrupted state. A local disaster, that could be anything from water spills to a fire or something that happens in the environment. A ransomware attack that takes over your computer. Just plain old simple hard drive failure. Particularly the older hard disk drives, those are spinning magnetic plates. They wear out. They're not designed to last forever. So just like how you have to change the tires on your car, you need to swap out those parts periodically. Theft is a real big one. And of course, as we shared, good old human error. We can protect for lots of things, but not humankind. So just some things to think about. And if you look at what's happening, the amount of photos being stored is basically doubling here every five years. So if you look at the number of trillions there over a five-year period, it effectively doubled. 
meaning that the amount of images being stored just keeps increasing. And it's important to keep that in mind that this is gonna to continue to affect you. All right, so World Backup Day, it is time to improve your workflow, right? So when is it? Well, March 31st is World Backup Day, but what we like to say for those of us who've learned the hard way is that every day is World Backup Day. So March 31st is a great time to get started if you haven't been doing these practices, but make this something that you do all the time. With 3 to one Backup, this is a core strategy that you want to implement. It's pretty straightforward. And what it means is, is you want three copies of your data, a primary that you work from and two that are just purely backed up. You don't wanna work off of your backup. You wanna work off of the primary and leave the backups pristine. Because if you work off of different ones, it's easy to get things out of sync. You also wanna save it on two types of media. Now, ultimately, this means two locations. So if you've got a really big hard drive and you've got a folder and a backup, technically that's a backup. But if that hard disk went down, you lost both copies at once. For those of us who are even more paranoid, we suggest using two different types of media. So if you're using traditional hard drives, you might wanna supplement that with SSDs. They're more rugged, particularly if you're throwing them in a laptop bag and taking them on the road, SSDs are not meant to be dropped, but they are much more durable if you were to drop them or vibrate them or throw them in a bag or have temperature changes. They're not nearly as volatile as the older hard disk technology. And this one is critical. One needs to be kept off site. So that could be the cloud, that could be a separate location. You're gonna learn a little bit later about a tool called Mylio that I use, and it allows you to set up multiple vaults. So you could plug these hard drives in at different physical locations, like your home and your office, and make sure that you have backup copies of all of your photo data. All right, so for photo and video content, there's a couple things to do right away. Make sure you transfer that material off the memory cards to reliable hard drives right away. One of the things that I like to use in the field to speed this process up is those SSDs, because SSDs have faster read times and transfer speeds. You can see seven, 10 times faster performance on them. It's so much better to get the material off the memory cards. So when I'm traveling on vacation or I'm on a professional video shoot set, we like to use SSDs because it speeds up the process of getting the data backed up. Make sure that you transfer off the memory card to the hard drive twice. Don't copy to the hard drive and then copy the hard drive. If you do that and the first copy is bad, the second copy is bad. So you wanna make two fresh, pristine copies. And the actual act of copying the data will prevent damage and will spot any issues. Ideally, you keep the memory cards around or you clone a copy to an offsite location like cloud or offsite backup. Now, that's if you really wanna be safe. And if you're interested in this and you wanna go deeper into it, there's a great website called dpbestflow.org. It's co-authored by Peter Krog. I've contributed some articles up here as well and it is the definitive source about backup. So if you wanna go much deeper, and I mean much deeper than we are today, you can go here and find all sorts of great white papers and articles to, to really help you out. Well, now it's time to talk about choosing a backup drive and we're gonna bring in our first expert. So I'm really excited. I've had a chance to get to know him. He really knows his stuff. He's also a photographer, so he understands the challenges that we face. And so I'd like to introduce Jason McGuire. And Jason, you are also a sports photographer. Uh, you are an advertising photographer and a storage advocate. Tell us a little bit about yourself and walk us through some of the things we need to know to get our job done. Nice to see you, Rich, and thank you for having me. And thank you to everybody from around the globe who has joined uh, this evening, or in some cases, very early in the morning for our friends in Australia. Um, so yeah, as Rich mentioned, my name is Jason McGuire. I am the current uh, global marketing manager of social media specifically uh, with Crucial Memory, which is a segment of Micron technology. Um, my past, a, a little bit about that. I was a full-time action sports and advertising photographer for many years before I transitioned into more of a full-time marketing role, but that's a little bit about me. And we're going to uh, dive into some SSD stuff real quick and make sure you guys have everything you need to know on uh, 
the best tools for backing up. Um, so yeah, for, first off, uh, one of the big things is choosing the right connection type. I, I think um, we've all seen the various types that are listed here between USB-C, Thunderbolt, and USB-3. But what exactly is the difference between the three? Um, so first, USB-3 is definitely the latest generation of USB technology. Um, and they, they offer that in basically three options. There's Gen 1 that offers up to five gigabyte a second transfer speeds. Gen 2 is 10 gigs. And then there's Gen 2 by 2, which is up to 20 gigs. Um, so pretty, pretty cool stuff there. Definitely an upgrade from the old USB-A days. Um, and then we get into some some others such as Thunderbolt. Anybody who uses an Apple product, you're probably very familiar with this with this option as it's the, the main one that they use on their items, though they have started to work with USB-C as well. Um, the biggest thing about that is 40 gigabit second transfer speed. So blazing, blazing fast transfer capabilities and, and definitely the leader for anybody looking for a speed option. Um, and then going into the USB-C stage, um, very similar to Thunderbolt technology. And in some cases, it is the same connection type um, as USB-C outlets can be capable of Thunderbolt speeds. Um, and in that case, if you just have a standard USB-C, which we're starting to see pop up a lot more with um, like the MacBook lines, um, some of the PC laptop options, even on phones now, um, those speeds are about 20 gigabytes a second. So um, really any more with connections, you can't go wrong, but if you're looking for the ultimate in speed, Thunderbolt's definitely going to get you there. So uh, HDDs, how do they compare to SSDs? Um, so the, I think the biggest thing here, and really a hard disk drive is older technology, but it still has a purpose. Anybody who's storing a large amount of data, and we're talking you know, six, seven, eight terabytes on upwards, um, they, they still have a very good purpose for that. They can be uh, bought at a very low cost per gigabyte or terabyte. Um, and they offer you know, a substantial amount of storage for not a ton of money. The biggest downside, of course, is two things. One, it's a little bit slower than an SSD, so you're not gonna get that speed benefit, which in the case of, say, your computer crashing and you do have a backup on an HDD, it's gonna take you a lot longer to restore your computer and get back up and running, uh, which for some people, that's, that's very detrimental especially anybody who's a working professional and needs you know, their computer running at top performance all the time. Um, so that's the big thing. And then also the other downside is just how fragile they are. You know, a, a small drop and those mechanical parts can break and completely eliminate your drive. Um, so that is also kind of another important piece about the 3 2, one backup method is to ensure that you have the redundancy there that in case they're does become an issue at any level, you still have at least one or two copies of that elsewhere that you can rely on to help save the day. Looking at SSDs or solid state drives, um, cool stuff here. Obviously the kind of the latest and greatest of storage technology um, that can fit in the palm of your hand. And I think there's two really key things to think about when you're looking at SSDs. Um, one is just the overall speed. Um, they can get you back up and running in a tenth of the time that an HDD can. Um, so that, that's kind of a huge benefit. And in a lot of cases, you're also going to have a lot faster write speeds as well. So if you, you are on a time crunch and you really need to get stuff transferred over quickly, that's going to help speed up the process there. Um, the other big thing too, and I think probably the most important is just the overall durability. The nice thing about SSDs is there are no moving parts, hence the keyword solid. And the nice thing about that is when there's no moving parts, there's nothing inside that can break. Um, at least not from something like a drop, um, unless say you drop it off a skyscraper, which I don't think anybody's going to jump up and down to do. Um, but those are those are really big benefits there, especially for anybody that, that's on the go. Um, you know, you can throw them in your pocket and, and you know take off for a weekend or whatever, and your your data is going to be safe. You're going to have a lot of storage to throw um, documents or photos or video files or anything you want on, really. Um, and the cool thing is, as you can see in the photo, it's a pretty small handheld drive. So that that's our crucial X8 drive. 
Um, and I've got one here to show you guys the size comparison. It really is super, super tiny. Um, and then compared to like an iPhone, you know, very, very, it's smaller than an iPhone 13 Max, slide it in your pocket really anywhere you go. And then you can take it another step lower with the Crucial X6. And something as small as this, um, which is what, like a less than a third or a quarter size of your cell phone, um, fits in the palm of your hand and you can have up to four terabytes of storage just boom like that um and something like that you know you can be standing there drop it out of your hand it hits the ground and it's going to be fine because they're drop test rated for about six and a half feet so um ssds are, are definitely kind of the the best storage solution you can have if you need speed performance durability and really um the portability as well um, so just, just a quick little recap on this, HDDs are going to be cheaper, but they're going to come at the compromise of being less durable, slower, and less portable. Um, I think we've probably all been there at a, a time or two where you have this giant uh, ray system or, um, you know, like a, say a four terabyte HDD that has to be plugged in to, to work. Um, you know, those those are all things that that definitely slow down the, the portability factor. Um, where on the SSD side, you will spend a little bit more money, but the great thing is, is that the cost of SSDs has dropped dramatically over the last five or six years, and um, it's, it's made them a much more affordable option for your everyday user. And you get the speed benefit, durability, and obviously the compactness as well. So just a little recap on just a couple of the drives that we offer at Crucial, um, our X8, one terabyte, two terabyte capacities, um, seven and a half foot drop rating, obviously super, super compact and you know read speeds of up to 1050 megabytes a second. So that kind of really highlights how quick these things are when you need to get your data off of them um, in the sense of a PC crash or, or something like that. You're able to plug that thing in and get back up and running really, really fast. Um, X6 is pretty much a carbon copy of our X8, just a smaller footprint and a little bit slower. Um, but overall, they are super, super fantastic drives, and um, both of them support Windows, Mac, iPads, uh, PC, tablets, literally anything. Um, gamers use them on PlayStations and Xboxes, and uh, so they're really, really wide variety of use there. Um, and, and honestly, a, a perfect solution for being able to take something and store it away. And uh, actually, earlier we had somebody ask, like, hey, I don't want to store my data on a cloud or internet based service. So what could I do? Another good solution there is to take something especially small like this, whether it's crucial or another drive. And um, due to the size, you're able to go take that down to, you know, your bank and put it in a safety deposit box or, you know, something like that. They don't take up a lot of room and, and um, are, are kind of a lifesaver for a lot of us to say the least. And, and what I love here, Jason, these are widely available, right? Like we could find these at all sorts of stores. I ordered mine on Amazon and I got it the next day. Yeah, absolutely. So we work with pretty much every major retailer across the world, Best Buy, Amazon, New Egg, Media Market for, you know, some of our international customers and um, we also have uh, direct e-com sales on crucial.com as well that's available in multiple countries. One of the coolest things about these is that they are so versatile and what they can work with. Um, we actually were in the office the other day and, and plugged it into a Samsung Galaxy phone. And um, my social media coordinator was able to transfer files from his phone right onto the hard drive in you know seconds. Um, we've done the same thing with an iPad as well. We One of our uh, one of my good buddies, the uh, music photographer, travels all the time. He's shooting on the road, and sometimes he can't have his laptop, so he brings his iPad, um, plugs his plugs his memory card into his iPad, offloads the photos on there, plugs in his X8, and is able to immediately take them from the iPad and drop them on to the um, X8. So definitely some solutions there. And in, at the end of the day, that's kind of what Crucial is all about. We're storage and memory experts, and we want to make everybody's life easier and, um, you know, offer offer solutions that are going to make, make your uh, life much better in the case of an accident. Remember, SSDs are a complement to your workflow. So here's my real world workflow. I love using SSDs as boot drives. They're so much faster. And Crucial makes both internal and external SSDs. So you got a lot of options for that. They're great for quick backups. You know, I take mine, 
plug it right into my laptop. It scans the laptop. I see what's different and it backs up in seconds. I leave one of these plugged into my main desktop computer and it just mirrors itself every night. We're gonna talk about that workflow a little bit later in the webinar. And while no one intends to drop a hard drive, these are designed to be dropped and hard drives are not designed to be dropped. So I feel a lot better having this in my laptop bag, even just bouncing around. But back in the studio, back at home, you might still find yourself using big hard drives for large capacity. As Jason said, you start getting over six terabytes, eight terabytes. Well, then you really should be looking at those bigger drives if you need a big vault. And that tends to get a little bit cheaper. So here's my real world workflow at home. This is a screenshot uh, of my desktop and I've got an internal SSD in my Mac. I use a time machine, six terabyte hard drive, taking advantage of time machine. Time machine's not great for backing up photos and videos, but it's great for backing up documents. It can take snapshots. Windows has a backup utility in Windows as well that can do similar things. I use a high performance Thunderbolt RAID that has eight drives striped together to give me 64 terabytes with redundancy. It's what I put my active video editing projects on. Well, that's great. Cost per terabyte is way better. And I use a cheap but useful drive from Seagate at 16 terabytes with Mylio. And every picture I take on my phone, my tablet, put on my, any of my laptops, I've got three laptops for different purposes, they all end up on this vault. And Angela's gonna talk about vaults and Mylio in just a second. But I back up to actually two of these crucial SSDs. Well, now we're gonna to move to a big thing that really screws things up for folks, right? So this is one of the things that most people don't have backed up. They go, oh, my phone. Our phones have become so important. For many of us, it's our primary camera. And if not, it's actually, even if it's not our primary camera, it's still our most frequently used camera. And we don't have those pictures safe. We can lose them. And so it's really important that we take steps to do this. And so Mylio works on multiple devices, but one place where it really shines is what it does with your phone. So we've invited Angela and Angela is a Mylio Photos evangelist. So she knows the product super well. And she's also a fine art photographer, a visual storyteller, and she works with photo clubs and groups as a coach. So she knows a lot about this. She's been taking pictures for a long time and she knows how important they are. Angela, it's good to have you, welcome. Thanks for having me, Rich. I'm glad to be here and welcome everybody. Um, as a photographer and a photography educator, one of the things that people come to me the most often for is help because A, they can't find their photos and B, they had a hard drive crash, they're panicked and they need to figure out a way to make sure they never lose a photo again. Um, so I'm very, very passionate about making sure people get backed up. And I really wanna help you make sure that you don't lose images on your phone because that's where so many of us are taking our photos these days. I have a big camera and I love it, but 80% of the photos I take are snapshots with my phone when I'm out and about. And I've talked to so many people over the years who have had phones stolen, they've lost them, their phone broke, the screen broke, they couldn't get into them. They go get a new phone, they expect that everything's gonna transfer over from the cloud and not everything was backed up. Uh, and that can happen for a few reasons. Um, one, especially with you're talking about iPhones, that iCloud photo storage, uh, if you're not paying Apple a little bit extra a month, you might not have everything on your phone backed up. And a lot of people don't realize this. And some of those images are just living on their phone. So when something happens to that device, that's gone. So that's why you want to make sure you're paying attention to the 321 backup philosophy when you're talking about your phones as well, because that's some pretty important stuff. A lot of people have their pictures of their kids, their families, their pets, and these precious moments that you can never get back if those images are lost. So we wanna make sure that not only are you backing up to the cloud, so Google Photos or the iCloud photo library, but you're also getting your images onto a different type of device. And that can be a different cloud. So maybe something like Amazon Photos, um, or you could use a system like Mylio. And Mylio is an awesome application that syncs your photos and videos across every device that you have and offers options to protect your photos on drives that you control. So that way you can make sure not only are your images protected to the cloud, but you have a physical copy at your home or your office or both. So it really depends on how protected you wanna be, but I really encourage you to think about 3-2-1 backup for your phone as well. 
So what Milio does is a cool synchronization service. It is not the cloud. You control all of your images. You control all of your storage so you can put those crucial drives to use. Um, but what you do to get started is you pick your home base, which for me, that's my laptop. It might be your desktop computer at home. Um, whatever computer has the most storage, that's probably where you're going to want to set up first. Download Milio to that app to that computer, get it up and running, import a few photos, and then you can start adding devices. And your devices can be your iPhone, your Android phone, your tablet, your iPad, all of these devices. And you can even add additional computers. It's cross-platform. It works on Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. And you tell Milio what you want to sync. Um, eventually, once you're set up and you have things syncing, you can add what we call a vault. A vault is any drive that has a complete copy of all of your images that are in your Milio library. So as you're bringing all those pictures in, it's creating a separate copy on a different device that is protected. And you can have multiple vaults, and this protects you from device failure, so hard drive failure, things like that. So you can always rebuild if something happens to one of those devices. And Angela, one of the things I love, because we talked about a, a set it and forget it strategy, is that as I put Milio on my phone and my tablet and my other laptops, as I bring pictures in, it just starts putting them on the vault for me. I don't have to say back up now. I don't have to remember. As soon as my phone hits Wi-Fi or my laptop hits Wi-Fi, it's backing up. That's why I love tools like this because you take the time to set them up once and then they just keep working. Because if you have to remember to push the go button, that's the point of failure, the human error. Absolutely. I mean, and that's why historically when I'm talking to the people I work with for photography education, um, I'm a big fan of the Apple's time machine because you turn it on, you make sure it's set to back up your computer and any attached external drives and it runs. Also a reason I'm a big fan of Backblaze. Same thing, but that sends it to the cloud. But this is geared towards your photos and videos and certain documents that Milio can hold. So it's a great way to add a little bit of extra protection and protect those images that you're bringing in off of your phone. Um, Milio does have cloud optional. You can add that in as kind of a separate device, but it's not required because we want to make sure that you have complete control over your images. As I mentioned, you can put this on all the different devices that you have. Um, Milio breaks things down into, let's say, four different file types, thumbnails and XMP files, which is your metadata. Those are synced to all of your devices. So you can organize from any device. You can view your photos on any device. Those thumbnails take up a very, very small amount of space. And just for a point of reference, an entire terabyte of photos takes up about one gig of thumbnails. Um, if you have a tablet with an, a little bit of extra storage space, I know my iPad, I think I got 512 gigs. I might wanna put smart previews for all of my images on my iPad, that's a higher quality. And it allows me to edit these images. It retains a lot of the raw editing capabilities if you shoot in raw on your mirrorless DSLR or other larger camera. And you can even use those for email, social media, and prints up to five by seven. So that's really, really cool. If you need that full quality original, you can always use what we call tap to sync to download that full quality original. And then of course your originals are kept on your vault drives and on your external drives that are in your possession. And you can access those full quality images whenever you need to. And I think that whenever you need to part Angela is bears emphasis because I was organizing my images on an airplane, even though the airplane's Wi-Fi wasn't working and they wouldn't let you pull down data from the cloud like this. I had my entire photo library. So I was able to take a recent photo shoot, start to edit it, make selects, an album, tag, keyword, you know, rate the pictures. And then as soon as I connected to Wi-Fi, my hard drive and all my libraries at home updated. And so you said XMP, that's the same XMP that Lightroom uses and uh, every other app uses, right? Like just about every photo app can read those stars and labels. Exactly. And if you've taken time in another app like Lightroom um, or XI or any of these other apps that support XMP, you've created some of this data already, Milio can read that as well. So any organization work that you do that's saved to those XMPs, it's synced across all of your devices, which is so very convenient. A few benefits about Milio. Their search is super, super powerful. You have face recognition. You can see your images on the map. 
And in those search fields, if there is text in that image, so let's say you take a photo of your family next to the welcome to Ohio sign. If you search Ohio and Milio can see and, and that text is legible on that sign, it's gonna recognize Ohio and it's gonna pull that up in the search. And I think that's just incredible. So being able to search and find your images is super important. Your images aren't worth much if you don't know where they are and you can't find them when you want them. Uh, Mylio also helps you discover photos that you kind of forgot that you had. One of the ways it does this is you can pull down photos from social media, so Facebook, Flickr, and Google. I did this with my Flickr images and I found a bunch of photos that I had forgotten that I'd taken from way back, you know, way, way back. So those were a lot of fun to find and those were ones that I had taken with my cell phone ages and ages ago. I don't know where those originals are. So the fact that I was able to pull them down and put them back into my library is just really, really cool and a great way to view my life visually. You can also see all of your images on what we call the life calendar. So it takes all of your images from all of your sources and all of your cameras and view, you can view them on one single unified calendar. Um, it's just a really great way to kind of see your life in pictures. And then of course, we wanna make sure that your images are protected. So you can use multiple vaults to make sure you have multiple copies of those images on different types of media. You can transfer your photos very quickly and easily from your phone to those drives. And we have a really cool feature inside of Mylio called the sync panel. And you can see exactly what is being synced and what is still remaining to be synced. So you can make sure that all of your images are protected. So that's a really, really powerful feature. Angela, there's a question that I think is super relevant now. Sure. Uh, you know, if somebody stops using Mylio and that vault, What's the worst that happens when they stop using Mylio? Are there files in some proprietary place or proprietary format? No, they are absolutely not. All of your images are in the open file system on your computer. You can access them. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to end up more organized than when you started because all of that information is in those XMP files and readable by other uh, software. So you can pick up I won't say exactly where you left off there, but it's good. you're going to be in a better position for having used Mylio than when you started. Excellent. So I encourage you guys to check that out. Uh, if they want to get going, we've got a great link here, Mylio, uh, for the Mylio Quick Start Guide. So that will get you up and running right away. And uh, Angela, I believe you guys also have an educational community that people can visit that has a we ton do. of tutorials and resources. Yeah, so you can find that at community.mylio.com. And it's a great place to not only find education, but to connect with other like-minded people who are interested in protecting their images and organizing them, ask questions and um, share photos. It's, it's a great community. And then, awesome. um, as I mentioned earlier, Mylio is available for Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS, and all of your devices and a variety of different file types. So whether you're shooting RAW, JPEG, uh, some other file type, it's, there's an expansive list. You can also find system specifications, what raw file types are supported. If you go to manual.mylio.com, we have a comprehensive user guide that is searchable. Um, so I encourage you to check that out as well. Awesome. And, and I got to tell you, Angela, my favorite feature is this one, which is when I'm paranoid and I'm gone, I could just take out this and take a look and go, oh, well, I've got pictures on my laptop that haven't been backed up to my vault, but I can see my entire photo library across all devices and know what's backed up, what's in sync. And I love that tap to sync. So with the click of a button, I could pull pictures down to my laptop when I need them. So Mylio is available. Uh, you can find out information about pricing on their website, but it's about $100 a year US for, for those of you that want the unlimited version. And there's a free version that you can use at no cost uh, that's a little bit limited on storage, but that you can try out if you want to just give it a, a test drive. I wanted to talk about backing up the computer. And there was a couple of questions about, well, how do you do that? So I mentioned that I'm a big fan of multiple backups. So I would suggest for your computers, using a type of cloud storage. Now, a lot of you are gonna use iCloud or Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive because they're closely integrated with your operating systems. But you've heard some of us mention services like Backblaze and CrashPlan or Dropbox. These can add the ability to choose a little bit more specifically what you back up. And uh, I use Backblaze to keep everything in the cloud. For example, I have 72 terabytes of photos and video file on Backblaze's cloud. It cost me $10 a month. Now, if I were to do a restore, it would take about two months. 
unless I want to pay to have them ship me a hard drive or a couple of hard drives, which you can do. Um, but it is an insurance policy, and it means that if a hard drive goes down, I can recover. If there's a fire or every piece of technology was stolen from my house while we were on vacation, I would have a recovery method. And so think of it as the true slowest, cheapest form of backup. Now, the other solution is to do some automated backups, carbon copy cloner, syncback pro, super duper. There's lots of tools like this. This lets you plug in a drive and it will make backups for you. What this does is it can clone it and you can set the frequency of the clone. Some people said, well, should I unplug the drive if my computer gets infected with the virus? You might, or you might wanna cycle between the drives, having two backup drives. Some people will set one to backup daily and one to backup once a week. So I actually have two SSDs plugged in, one backs up daily, one backs up once a week. That way, if I got a virus on my computer, the once a week backup drive would hopefully be uninfected because I would have a few days pad there that I could explore. So just something to think about as a potential method. Ideally, as we've said a few times, both, the best of both worlds, cloud plus local backup, SSDs plus hard disks where you need them. But you wanna get that best performance. So the SSDs are wonderful for speed. Run them every night, every time I plug into my laptop, use them as working drives, they work great. But if you need additional, some of those slower, all you can store cloud option plans that are $10 a month, things like Crash Plan, Backblaze, they're in about that $10 a month price point. They'll let you back up everything at a cheaper price, or you can get a high capacity hard disk drive and use that. But the SSDs are really a key here because of speed and performance. All right, well, success is near, meaning it is time for change. Just a couple of reminders of what you learned today. And that is that you need three copies of your data, one primary backup plus two more copies. You wanna make sure that you have it on two different physical devices. Ideally, one of those devices is different than the other. So you're not relying on the same storage type. I like to use SSDs as an extra backup because they're more rugged and durable. And one type of offsite backup. Now that durability, by the way, I love the fact that I could just unplug the SSD and throw it in my bag and take a backup of my computer with me. If I had to unplug and move a giant hard disk array, my thing over here, it weighs like 40 pounds. I've got to unplug six cables. It's not designed for grab and go. So SSDs are great for that sort of grab and go type backup. We'll be releasing a guide to safer backups for photographers. And it takes the concepts we explained here and gives you step-by-step -step instructions. So you'll be able to find this in the Mylio community. This will make it easy for you to take what you learned and put it into action. So think of today as the what and the why, and this book will give you the step-by-step -step how instructions. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about 321 Backup, and I really hope that it helps you transform your workflow and keep your files safe.